Prepare to hear an epic tale as we tell you a story which began 400 million years ago when the earliest tetrapods evolved from the humble low fin fish. A typical body plan of a fish has fins, gills for breathing and a swim bladder for buoyancy. This body plan is completely unsuitable for life on land and is drastically different to what they would evolve into to later inhabit the terrestrial environments. Currently, the phylogenetic view is that all tetrapods evolved from one single common ancestor. In this video, we will discuss three forms of tetrapods with key morphological changes. Eustinopteron was one of the first known low fin tetrapod morph fish. It is closely related to tetrapods and low fish. It can be found at fossil sites such as Quebec in Canada. It reached an extent of 1.8 metres in length and was a fully aquatic shallow water predator. Eustinopteron possessed a short, broad skull with a two part cranium which hinged along an intracranial joint and a distinct post parietal bone. The strong pectoral fins display clear upper and lower portions with humerus, ulna and radius. Robust pelvic fins have a similar arrangement with femur, tibia and fibula. The spine had both the dorsal lobe and ventral fins connected rigidly. Traditional fossils such as Tic Tac provide evidence that primordial legs could have evolved in creatures that were fully aquatic. Titanic is described as a cross between a primitive fish and a four-legged creature, measuring 1.2 to 2.7 metres in length. A transitional fossil filling a gap in the evolutionary record, Titanic fossils were first discovered in the Canadian Arctic in 2004. It lived in brackish waters along gently sloping river floodplains, and probably spent more time in the water than on land. Having a crocodile-like flat head measuring approximately 20 centimetres, Tutalis skull was longer and narrower than previous tetrapod forms, and it also had a smaller post parietal bone. A change of breathing and feeding habits may be indicated by its lack of bony gill cover and elongated snout. Tutalic had the ability to snap a prey and hold it with its sharp teeth. Large, dorsally placed eyes with a wider range of vision from both above and to the side assisted predation. Its body had a large, robust pelvic girdle and pectoral fins that had almost become forelimbs. Paired appendages consisting of small distal bones, humerus, ulna, ulnar and radial bones were still predominantly fins. The long hind limbs were powerful and assisted swimming as well as providing support for movement on land and across mudflats. It is believed Ichthyostega existed in the Upper Devonian about 365 million years ago, with the first fossils being discovered in Greenland. Ichthyostega possessed a strong ribcage, lungs, a tail with ray fins, and limbs, which would eventually enable it to make the transition from an aquatic environment to a terrestrial. Ichthyostega possessed a more simplified cranial structure compared to that of its predecessors Tiktaalik and Eustinopteron, with the eyes also in a more dorsal frontal position. The pelvic girdle was also removed from the back of the skull, which may have suggested a shift from respiration from the gills. Its broader, flasher and more elongated skull may have enhanced ventilation to its lungs. Small bones in the limbs became enlarged and connected to the axial skeleton. As complex joints such as the ankle and elbow began to develop, there was a reduction in the ray-like dermal bones and eventually a complete loss, leading to the development of digits. Each of Ichthyostega's hind limbs contained seven digits. Ichthyostega also possessed a stronger vertebral column to that of Eustinopteron and Tiktaalik, which helped it to support its body weight when on land. So why make the step onto land in the first place? Evolutionary pushes may have been factors here, such as unfavourable aquatic temperatures, hypoxia and increased salinity. Large Devonian predators may have been a threat, if not at least competition at this time in the water. There is suggestion that some tetrapods would have basked in the heat of the sun on mud flats. This would have promoted faster digestion, more rapid growth, as well as more successful reproduction. Plants and invertebrates had beaten the tetrapods in the conquest of land, so an abundance of food could have been an evolutionary pull factor. This was during the Devonian, when the first forests were growing and oxygenating the atmosphere. A range of ecological niches would have been available for these creatures with an attractive absence of predators and competition. This evolution onto land is a major event in the history of life. 
This animal is our ancestor. At the end of the day, dinosaurs, mammals, humans, we are all just modified fish.